If you've got a video file to share with people, using Acrobat 10 Suite may seem a strange way to go about it, but I can hopefully show you there are some very good reasons to use PDF files when you're sharing video. I'm working on some footage from a high-def helmet camera, and I need to show this clip of me and a colleague doing some training on a wind farm to a group of clients and get their feedback as quickly as possible. I could upload it to YouTube or Vimeo or post the file on my web server and let them download it, but in many, many ways that would be bad. To start with, I don't want to hand over the raw camera footage. Some of the stuff near the end, although it's quite artistic, is completely irrelevant. And it's huge. If we look at the file properties, this is a 251 megabyte file for one and a half minutes of footage at full HD, 1920p, 60 frames a second, stereo sound. Even with high speed internet, it isn't the sort of thing you want to be sharing with people. And I want comments. So if someone has an opinion on the top right hand corner of the frame exactly 55 seconds in, I want them to be able to make that comment and explain what they want changing in a very simple way. In the past, commenting on videos usually involved lots of emails where people were simply trying to describe how to find the thing they were looking at. And it all gets very messy very quickly. PDF solves all of that and then some. To begin with, I'm going to convert the footage using Adobe Media Encoder, which is part of the Acrobat 10 suite. Now the camera saves to H.264, so if it was small enough, I could embed this MP4 video directly into a PDF with Acrobat 10. But at a quarter of a gig, it's clearly not. And ideally, if we could get this down to under 10 megabytes, it becomes manageable. I simply need to drag this into Media Encoder, and then I'll click Settings to open the options and decide how we're going to encode this file. Acrobat 10 can import flash video FLV files and any H.264 files, including F4V and MP4. I'm going to stick with F4V in this case. And if we watch at the bottom here, we've got an estimate of the exported file size, which updates as we go. So we can tinker with the options and see what payoff we get between quality and file size. We've already down to 106 meg, but we need to do better than that. Now, Media Encoder ships with a load of presets for each file type. And if we look at the presets for F4V, there's one for mobile devices, which has a usefully sized dimension, 768 by 432. That'll be small enough to give us a sensible file, but big enough that the commenters will be able to see the detail in the footage. If I choose that preset, we've now dropped to 9 meg. So we're doing quite well, but we're going to do even better. The camera only recorded wind noise, so I can turn off the audio. That saves us another megabyte. And I don't really need 60 frames a second, so I'll drop that down by half from 59.94 to 29.97. And I can vary the quality or the bit rate of the output, and the estimate will adapt accordingly, so we can see what effect increasing the quality will have. If we want to see the final output, we can switch to the output tab and see the size and the cropping of the video. But I only want a section of this, so I need to set the in and out points. And if I move through the clip and find the part at which we go all artistic, which is around about there, I can now click the out point marker, and only this first orange section of the timeline, 48 seconds of it, will be encoded. We've now dropped to 5 megabytes, so I can probably push the bit rate up again to get back to something around about 10 payoff between quality and distributability. New word for you. I can click OK at this point and click Start Queue and Media Encoder will start churning through the video. Now I'm on a 64-bit machine. Media Encoder comes in both 32 and 64-bit versions so it can run on almost any hardware and take advantage of your RAM and CPU cores. And Despite being full HD, this is encoding in real time and it's only taking around 45 seconds to finish. You can see the progress in the thumbnail at the bottom. And once we're finished, we're going to have an F4V file, which is manageable in terms of distributing it around to people. But we still need to convert it into a PDF. And three, two, one, click. Converting our F4V into PDF is really very simple. Um, we can drag and drop it onto the Acrobat icon on the desktop. We can open Acrobat and drag and drop it into the application. We can use the Create button on Acrobat, or we can simply right-click the file and choose Open with Adobe Acrobat. The first thing we'll get is the Insert Video dialog asking us how we're going to put this file into our PDF file. 
we can decide under the advanced options how this is going to start playing back, what types of controls are being embedded, but I'm just going to stay with the defaults and click OK, and Acrobat will automatically name the PDF file to match the video. All we have to do is click Save, stick that on our desktop, and we are good to go. The file is completely self-contained. Videos will play back using the embedded version of Flash Player in Acrobat and Reader 9 and above. So it's smooth, it's very efficient, we don't need to download any codecs, we're not bothered about what platform people are using to watch their videos, and you can even switch to full screen if you're so inclined. Now we need to sort out commenting. Um, if we're sending it out in an ad hoc fashion, such as via the Send Now service, which is integrated into Acrobat 10, or we're saving it to a company website, we need to enable commenting permissions so that recipients with only the Adobe Reader can use the full range of markup tools. And you do that from File, Save As, Reader Extended PDF, Enable Commenting and Measuring. However, we're not going to bother because the file is still quite a size, it's 10 megs, and if we use an ad hoc workflow, the recipients will either have to send the entire file back or be told how to manually export their comments and email them. And I want to send the file out and get back only the comments. Plus, I want everyone to be able to see the comments made by others as they're happening and reply or disagree or reject as we go along. For that, we use an Acrobat shared review. From the comments pane, we open the review panel and we choose send for shared review. Now shared review automatically reader extends the file so we don't need to do the save as step anymore. We can host the review on acrobat.com or on our own internal company server and choose who to invite to the review, each of whom will get an email instruction telling them how to access the file. Anyone else can join the review simply by downloading the file and starting to comment on it, and everyone can see the comments as they're published thanks to the tracker tool, which is built into Acrobat and Adobe Reader. Hosting on Acrobat.com is easy to access, it's free, we don't need to do any setup work. An internal server is fine if the file can't be sent outside the company for legal reasons, but it means everyone on the review has to have read-write access to the server so they can upload their comments. In this case, I'll stick with Acrobat.com. It will authenticate my Adobe ID so that the files will be stored on my workspace on Acrobat.com. And then it will ask me for the list of email addresses to send this file to. So I will send it off to Kara. And I can change the message if I want to explain precisely what I'm sending and why it's being sent. I can choose a deadline for when the review is going to end or I can set the review to be indefinite and I can end it manually myself once everyone's replied. And then I just simply click send. We now get the message that it's been sent to acrobat.com and that our reviewers have been emailed and we get the yellow bar, which everyone will now be seeing when they open the file. And you'll notice the file has been saved as a copy with underscore review on the file name. So we've still got the original if we need it. Making comments on video is the really cool thing and the reason why we've gone through this process in the first place. If I go to a particular point in the video and decide I want to make a comment, let's say I'm sitting here and I want to make a comment, I can choose one of my tools. Let's say I'm going to use the, the pen tool. I can draw a little area around here um, and say something. You'll notice the comment automatically gets a timestamp to say where it is in the video and I can say something like not sure if this needs color correction that's fine if i click now back in the video doesn't seem to have made much difference but if i go to somewhere else in this video and start playing and think well what's this comment and i click on it it will take me to that exact time in the video and show me the comment if i click somewhere else in the video it takes me back to where i was before i clicked the comment and I can reply to this comment, I can make my own, I can use all of the tools available for adding sticky notes and markups. And once I've made a comment, I simply click publish and those comments will go out to everyone else who's joined the review. They simply need to use the check for new comments button to bring in these comments every so often. And as the review author, I can use the tracker system within Acrobat and it's also in Adobe Reader 
to see the status of the review, who's commented, who's opened the file, how many comments they've made. I can change the deadline or end the review. I can send an email to everyone to remind them that they should probably get around to looking at it at some point. And once I've finished, I can take all of these comments and I can export those comments as a comment summary, which generates a file showing all of those comments, including their timestamps. So once I've got all of my comments and reviews back, I can print that out and use it when I'm producing the final version of the video footage as a reference. Very simple, very quick, simple for the reviewers as well, and it involves the least possible amount of data transfer because once they've downloaded this PDF file once, the only information going backwards and forwards is the tiny amounts of data that contain the comments. So using PDF to share a video isn't so silly after all.